Good evening, good evening. Thank you for chiming Praise in the Lord. on this. Hallelujah. Uh, evening. We are excited that you are with us on this evening. Yes, we are. Welcome again. Yes. We appreciate everybody. Yes. We thank you for taking yes. out a time for yes. your busy schedule yes. to um mm -hmm. to um be with us in our weekly um uh, Bible study. We're still in the um we're still in the culture of the kingdom series, yes. but uh Pastor Roy decided to kind of like I don't want to say take a detour, but go a different route mm -hmm. because and we were gonna mm -hmm. we we're gonna talk about um talk about relationships over the next few weeks. Which is very important because it is impossible to talk about uh, kingdom culture without talking about the institution of marriage. Mm -hmm. As we mentioned a few weeks ago, a covenant is based on trust. It is a promise made by two people vowing to do or not to do something. Amen. A covenant is a spiritual, it's a spiritual agreement. Mm -hmm. And it is a pledge. It is an ex it isn't an exchange. It's a moral commitment. Amen. It's it's not, you know, a contract relationship, mm -hmm. but it's a moral commitment from the heart. Amen. So a relationship so committed that the Bible describes the union as two becoming one flesh. In the Latin, the word covenant actually means a coming together. It is a voluntary agreement. No one has a gun to your head. It's a voluntary agreement that involves the giving of the prized possessions of one another's heart and soul without reservation. Amen. You are more than willing to lay down your agenda for each other. Mm -hmm. And let me say that again because I know this might be somewhat of a challenge for some people. But in that commitment, you're more than willing to lay down your agenda for each other. It is the giving of things within one's power for the mutual benefit of those that are involved. Mm -hmm. Please know, I didn't say an individual benefit, mm -hmm. but a mutual benefit. Amen. It is actually like your soul come together and they are tied together. Mm -hmm. There's a loyalty, and eventually, uh, no boundaries. You know, you, 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 you know, it's not. This is mine. This is this. No, there's no boundaries. A writer once said, "Love wants only the best. Love wants only the best, and cannot bear it being any other way." Like we said last week, marriage requires trust because you are saying, I will and I do before, before an unknown future. And from counseling sessions to the day of the wedding, we are given all times a chance that it's going, it's going to be a leap of faith. Amen. And although marriage has its moments, 
Yes, it does. Yes, yes, yes. All the marriage has its moments. The institutions of marriage, it's not a set of affairs. No, no. It is an unbreakable connection. Remember, I was uh, I said earlier about a soul tie. It is an unbreakable connection ordained by God that can withstand, it can withstand the test of time. That's if the two go into it with a serious conviction that weather the storm that comes with the intents of creating confusion. If you're willing to have a serious conviction that will weather the storm that comes with the intent of creating confusion, oh, you're going to end up having a ride or die relationship. Amen. In relationships, there are going to be moments where it seems like everything, <laughs> everything is going to hell in a handbasket. Hand Amen. <laughs> yes, Lord. everything is like, whoa, you know, what's going how on? Did we, how in the world did we, we get here? What's what's really going on? <laughs> what's really going on? And at that time, it may be easy to say, this is too much. Mm -hmm. Not only that, it can appear that nothing, nothing is left. You know what? I'm done. Or you might just say, I just can't, I can't do this no more. It might be hard sometimes. We'll be the first to admit. Amen. Amen. It's, it's going to be hard sometimes. Yes. But you got to remember who and what you're fighting for. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You got to remember who and for what you're fighting for. You're fighting for. You're fighting for a love that was meant to be. And that's what Satan does not like. When that union come together and they 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 are no, they 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 know that they're supposed to be a thing within a marriage, all all hell will break loose trying to create confusion and division. And, and that is, let me jump in and say this. When he was saying that, when he, when he was saying that that's what Satan doesn't like, and like we said before, covenants, rep, they represent agreement. Amen. And right, he's man. after the agreement. He's after the unity in the body of Christ because he knows that that agreement and that unity is where our, our strength lies. That puts like a hedge of protection around us. So when he was saying he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't like agreements. Every covenant that you you if 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 you if you um read and study your Bible, if you study covenants and you study dispensation, every covenant the enemy has tried to come, has tried to come against it. So he doesn't he doesn't like agreement because unity um that that is that is one of the that is one of the characteristics of the body of Christ or the kingdom of God, not only love, but that we that we are that we are united. And all those uh, although those vows you had taken probably was 10, 20 years ago and doesn't come uh, on your mind on a daily basis, you have to remember what you're fighting for. Amen. Amen. You're fighting for a love that was meant to be. Mm -hmm. And if you can fight through it, you can grow through it. I think I better say that again. You think I said it? Again? Amen. It's good. Amen. If you can fight through it, Hallelujah. You can grow through it. And and I, I have an additional question. What's so important about uh, about your marriage or relationship that the enemy has to take out one second to direct anything towards it? What's so that right there, that question right there, I think is an interesting question because it's really talking about, you know, the quality as well as the success that it can potentially have. You don't want to see that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anything that's worth fighting for is worth putting the energy, time, and effort in it. If you can fight through it, as I stated, 
you can grow through it. Yes, you can. Hallelujah. And it is the vows that protect our commitment mm -hmm. and that God ordained institutions. Yes, hallelujah. The vows are our personal relationship GPS. Mm -hmm. In the time of discouragement and disappointment. Mm -hmm. Vows tells us what to do and how to be. Yes, they do. They help remind us why we are with one another. Amen. They causes us to go outside of our personal absorbed mindset and show love, concern for our companion. Yes, they do. Hallelujah. While vows are for the other person, they are powerful in this sense that they create. <laughs> they create a bond. Man. Yes, they do. My brother, it's deeper than you may now kiss the bride. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. I, I, I know. I know. A lot of times, when brothers be stand, standing there with their uh, significant other, their reward. I mean, uh, that's all they hear. Yeah, that's that, that's all they want. The yeah. minister to get, uh, get through, cut through the chase, and get to the point. Because I gotta, go. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> Just listen to the vows uh, we're saying. For better or worse, mm -hmm. richer or poor, mm -hmm. sickness and in death, to love sickness and health. Sick, sickness. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Sickness and health. Yeah, I health. had to correct that one. Thank I can let that one fly yeah. back. <laughs> sickness. sickness and health. Uh huh. To love and cherish until death do us part. Amen. You know, when he was when he was talking about when I could totally agree when he said, you know, yeah. you waiting on you waiting on the, the official to say you may <laughs> you may now kiss the bride. You know, it's all about them vows. You know, if we could only fast forward into the future. Amen. So y'all better pay attention. Mm -hmm. You be just wait for, oh, you may not kiss the bride. No, you need to go back and say, oh, he said for, for better or for worse. Mm -hmm. He said for richer or for poor. He's, you know, he said in sickness and health. And you know what? I just want to interject this. Um, how I say vows remind us of why we are with someone. I can I can remember when I got sick and Pastor Roy lost his job. It was our commitment of love to each other and our vow and the spirit of those vows that saw us through. And you, it, you, you know what? And we're not trying to uh, brag. Because we know that there are many of you out there listening to us, mm -hmm. no doubt have had similar experience or greater. And as a result of that, you you uh, you, you can feel us. You can relate Amen. to what we're saying on this evening. Amen. It's not about just uh, Pastor Kelly and, and our experience, but some of the very things that kept you going over the bridge. Of trouble water. Amen. So it was. So it was. It was that love and commitment. It was. It was mm -hmm. that spirit of the vows mm -hmm. that you know that when I got sick, you know, you know what, we we had we had a we had a sickness or in health moment. Amen. When he Amen. when he lost his job, Amen. we were at a richer or a poor moment, mm -hmm. and that this goes that this goes back when he said that your vows are like your GPS. You know, they they direct you. Mm -hmm. It tells you how it tells you how to go. It tells you what to do. So it was the spirit of those vows that came to life to let us know, OK, now we're going to see how real the relationship we're going to see, you know, were those just were those just words that we were just, you know, repeating after the minister because the minister said, you know, repeat after me. Or was that something that was really coming from our heart? So, honey, do you know what this kind of reminds me of? What's that? Uh, there was a saying that we came across that went on this order. It said, uh, obstacles introduces a man to himself. Amen. 
I and believe see, that. And I see, that's, that. that's exactly what was, what was happening between mm -hmm. Carolyn and I. Yes, on our marriage, uh, uh, the day of our marriage, we was more than eager. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. But when uh, the mess hit the fan, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we didn't decide to uh, uh, bail out. Well, she's sick. You know, I don't want no sick woman. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I'm out. No, mm -hmm. no. Or he the ain't true, got no job. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, 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 the true ca character mm -hmm. of a person comes when they're uh, under adverse circumstances. Amen. Amen. You know, it, everybody could say, you know, how lovely things are when things are going good. Mm -hmm. But uh, what about when you walk in the valley of the shadow of death? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sir. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So it was it was the, the vows you, and our commitment mm -hmm. to each other that kept us together, that kept that bond, that kept that bond together, that we truly meant what we said. So that's why we often tell people marriage is serious. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you know, you know, and, and, and you should enter in, you know, what this is be this is a lifetime commit. It's a lifetime commitment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when the storms come, you know, the Lord, you know, especially if you have God in your life, God, you know, that, you know, that, that is so, so very important that, um, you both individuals have God in their life. That's why I, I, I tell, we tell people, well, you know, when, when you're looking at a companion or you're looking to choose, um, a, a companion, make sure you, it's someone that love God more than they love you. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. it's their relationship with God that's going to affect their relationship with you. So marry someone that love that love God more than you, because everything everything that they do is going to be related to their relationship with God. Amen. Your vows express how you intend to relate to each other. Mm -hmm. How you intend to navigate the path of life together. Amen. No matter how challenging life may be, mm -hmm. vows are about why of being together. Okay? The vows are the heart and soul, the cement, the rock mm -hmm. that you, you stand on. Mm -hmm. That explains why you're together. Mm -hmm. Okay? Your vows and realities are reflections of your true character mm -hmm. because, and I know I probably don't have to tell you this, but relationships are going to go through life cycles. Amen. But when those uh, changes happen, you'll be able to look at adversity in the eye. And I want you to feel me. You would be able to look adversity right in the eye, in the face, mm -hmm. and say, come hell or hot water, baby, I'm taking you into my future Amen. with me. I'm taking you in my future with me. I mean, it's, 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 it seems like love can find its way all through all that ugliness and in the, in the event of it, it, it surfacing, it'll make statements that you had no idea that you was gonna make that was appropriate for that time. Amen. Hallelujah. When and when he was saying that I kind of thought about a story of this one uh this one pastor was counseling this couple. That's why it's important to remember, remember what those vows said. You can't try to make it like an escape clause. Like this one, this one pastor said he was counseling a couple and he told, he told the um, man, he said, well, um, sir, don't you remember doing the vows you said for better or for worse? And he said, yes, sir, but she's a little bit worse than what I expected. And he was saying like, <laughs> okay, he say that that wasn't part of you know. Well, she's a, she's a, she, she's just a little bit worse than what I had expected. Wow. <laughs> 
Yes, yes, yes. Our vows explains the spirit of the role that would be performed in. Mm -hmm. it, it, it explains the spirit of the role that we are going to perform in. To name a few, Carolyn is my friend. Amen. Uh, she's my lover, mm -hmm. companion. Amen. Traveling buddy. Yes, yes. Can't wait to hit the road again. Yeah. <laughs> this pandemic seemed like it's got a, yeah, she's my traveling buddy. Uh huh. Uh, teacher, and possibly one day, my caretaker. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why, oh, possibly, and, and oh, that's why, that's why it's best to treat them good. <laughs> why you got your strip, buddy? <laughs> it, 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 like uh, he all, we, we already for a season in our life had to be my caretaker. That's why I tell people, you better marry somebody that don't mind taking care of you. Amen. You better Amen. marry somebody that don't want that when they they know that like I can say that. They don't mind giving you your medicine, mm -hmm. and they recognize mm -hmm. and they recognize some symptoms. So marry someone that that, that like I say, don't don't mind taking care of you. But you, but because it is it is it is a possibility that as you you know that as you grow older, even without growing older, that you may have to be that person be that person's caregiver. And you you know uh, a lot of times when you have done the right thing to your wife over the years. Mm -hmm. Uh, the quality of that that relationships it it develops a strong conviction towards mm -hmm. each other, mm -hmm. and if that companion happened to become sick, the individual that has uh, 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 their health is going to have a conviction. It's going to be as if they are on an assignment taking care mm -hmm. of that individual mm -hmm. that has uh, has all they need. Amen. Now the roles I just mentioned are just a handful of the many roles you would play with your partner during your marriage. Amen. And these vows will enable you to live out those roles in a way that makes the other person Happy. Amen. There's a degree of happiness mm -hmm. in marriage. You know, it's not, you know, uh, uh, being a Christian mm -hmm. uh, based on the principle that we operate on. A Christian marriage is untraditional. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not predict uh, predictable. And, and in saying that, he's saying, you know, like people will look at a Christian marriage and say, "Man, you took that." Uh, woman, you took that. It's, it's because the love of God is mm -hmm. the love of God is our compass. Mm -hmm. The love of God is what what keeps us going back. And so, you know what? We're gonna try this. Mm -hmm. You know what? We're gonna make this work. You know the love of God makes us not so easily to want to 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 give up. Mm -hmm. So that's when he says. So people look, man. You know how did you make it through all that? It was the love. And it was, and it was the grace of God. And 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 uh, the love of God takes the selfishness out of the equation. Amen. Mm -hmm. Especially when you have arrived at a, at a level of maturity, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you will have a tendency to accentuate the positive, and uh, a lot of times ignore the negativity, mm -hmm. because uh, that mature husband, uh, he he could easily be baited in uh, to some issues that that may appear to be something that of, of an uncomfortable uh, nature mm -hmm. and take it to another level. But wisdom, a wisdom oftentimes tells that husband, look, humble yourself, be patient. Mm -hmm. It's some type of scripture or, or word pertaining to a scripture that the Holy Spirit again uh, ministered to him. To him. Him, him in. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, now think about this here. At the end of the day, uh, uh, prior to us becoming saved, a lot of us uh, was in relationships. Therefore, we know about the problems of relationship. Why can't 
we come on the God side of life and experience that degree of happiness that we have stated earlier. And can I truly say that the epitome of our vows and love show up mm -hmm. January 2nd, 2020. <clears throat> when Pastor Carolyn lay half life, lifeless mm -hmm. in our kitchen floor. And I was crying out to God. God, Please don't take, don't take my wife. God, you know I, you know I love, you know I love my wife, and I, 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 I just lost my father and my sister. In my spirit, love was saying, I won't let go. You know, I, I, I picked her up as her head. I picked her up, I, I picked her head, I put her head in my hand. And I, I didn't know what to do. I was just vulnerable. I just slapped her. <laughs> I slapped her. He watched her. too many movies, y'all. No, no, no. That, <laughs> I, I That's could, what they do in the movies yeah. when somebody pass out. He watched too many movies. I called her name and he I slapped her. He called on her. Jesus and he slapped me. Three times. <laughs> and, 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 <laughs> and she wouldn't respond. Her eyes began to dilate in, uh, in the back of her head. The only thing I knew, knew to do was grab my phone and I called 911. Mm -hmm. I said, God, don't, don't take my life. Hallelujah. And love said, oh, hold on, Carol. Mm -hmm. Hold on, Carol. Everything Gonna be, gonna be. You know, God is in the miracle working uh, business. People, mm -hmm. God gave her a miracle that night. Yes, He did. And that another time, what yeah. we're gonna basically do, we're gonna we're gonna touch on the details of that. And, but, and, yeah. and you know, when He when something this um kind of like came yes. to me yes. to make a connection when He said I was laying in the floor and you know I would you know I was had just one unconscious and he couldn't get me to come to. And he was saying how, how, how obstacles and stuff will introduce a person to themselves. And one thing that I, one thing that I learned through that situation, it introduced me to myself that I had to, I, I always, I always worked. I think I got my first job when I was like 14. I always worked. I always went to school. So what, so what I had, so what I had to do, I had to learn to depend on someone. You know, I was always used to participating. Okay, I got a job. You know, I can help out. Now I'm in the doctor saying you you can't go back to work. You can't go to school. So now what what I felt was important. What 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 valid? Let me put it like this. What I thought validated me in the relationship was a job. And my education. So that was this like snatch from under me in nanoseconds. So that would that would that kind of like help me in our marriage. It kept me from being so um, independent. Like I was used to driving myself. I was used, you know, I was used to handling, you know, the affairs and stuff. Now I got to depend on you. if I want to go somewhere. I got to depend on him to take me. Or I got to depend on someone else, and one and another thing, too, doing that situation. And I all I just got to, I just want to say this, because I I never, you know, praise God for friends, you know, praise God for ride or die friends, praise God, because I during that time, um, I Pastor Word was working, and I, I just I know, but no, I, think, ahead, I think I think people, no, 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 it's, it'll it's fit important. right in. Yeah. Um, during that time, Pastor Roy was working. And you know he could only he could only take off so much. So I I had a dear friend. I called her Millie Sue. Millie Sue, if you listen, love you, girl. Hey, man, girl. She it, it, uh, this is like in the yes. this is in yes. the winter time. Yes. She came to the hospital. My another dear friend, my god sister, Doctor Washington. They came to the hospital. But mm -hmm. after I got out of the hospital, 
I still had to go through treatments. When I was in the hospital for a month, I had to, for, with treatments. After I got out of the hospital, I still had to go through treatments. I had to be an outpatient every day for like six to eight, about six hours. So my good friend, um, Mildred, she said, you know what? She said, I will take you to your treatments every day. Did not miss a day. I'm talking about, we talk about January through, I think, March or April. So what she would do, she would take me, she would take me to my treatments because I couldn't miss one. And then that would allow uh, Roy to keep working so he wouldn't have to take so much time off. So he would come and get me, but she would take me. So I just praise God for, for friends, you know, for, friend, for friends like that because I couldn't, I couldn't drive Absolutely. myself. So that kind of like stripped me of that um, independent spirit. Mm -hmm. Cause I was type of person, you know, I do it myself. I drive myself, you know, I, I you know, I, I'm good. I can handle it. But God said, no, you, you have to learn not to be so self-sufficient. Amen. You know what? Uh, I often uh, say that one of the uh, temperaments of a woman is uh, a lot of times she'll feel that she can fix it. Mm -hmm. Especially when she's in a relationship, mm -hmm. she she just feels like, hey, you know, I I can fix this thing. Mm -hmm. God eventually took that very uh, a mindset from my wife. Amen. Amen. You know, he 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 he. It it was something that was needful. Amen. And uh, uh, that 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 calls causes uh, that calls us. To you know, trust one another more. Mm -hmm. Amen. You Amen. Know? And uh, although it, it 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 came in that form, uh, a message had to be conveyed to my wife about the way she had to pull the tape. Amen. Amen. And I I just, I just thank God that it all worked out for the good. Yes, it did. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, um, now it I was can... concerning. It was mm -hmm. very concerning at that time mm -hmm. because it was it was a very serious situation when it came to her health in life. But uh, God knew that when it when when it came came to her, her bringing a uh, program that way, mm -hmm. that He had to snatch that from underneath. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, it put me in the it put me it it put me in a place automatically where I was forced to depend on. Where I was forced to depend on people, and I was telling, I was telling, so I say all this since fourteen. I had never not, you know, worked or went to school or did something. Mm -hmm. So it kind of like thrust me when God said, "Okay, you know, this is this is something that needs to be dealt with, because if not, who knows how long I would have still been on, in that cycle." Mm -hmm. I would still, I got to work. Okay, mm -hmm. I got to go to school. I got to be busy. Busy, 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 busy. So no, God, you know, like um, like um, one of my friends had told me, say, if you don't, I, I guess since you didn't sit down, God set you down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And one of, the, uh, one of the, I think one of the most beautiful benefits about it all is that it converted her into a more prayerful woman. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, now one now one of the most, I know we kind of went in a little direction, but you know, when I think back, I say, Lord, yes. I thank you. Yes. I give God, you know, yeah, like you know there. what? For every mountain, mm -hmm. I give God the glory for everything we went through. I give God the glory because mm -hmm. now I see. It was necessary. Amen. You know, God has a panoramic view of why he's allowing things to happen. It's like a person up in a plane. They can see they can see more of what, you know, than a person that's on the ground. So God had a, a panoramic view. Yes, you know did. what? Amen. I wouldn't I would I wouldn't change that journey for nothing mm -hmm. because, you know, I, I, I believe that I'm, I landed in exactly the place that God wanted me, wanted me to be. If I even if I would have worked five, six, six, six more years, if I would have had I don't know how many more degrees, I really believe that we ended up landing in the place that God had meant us to be. Now, this is this is one of the takeaway points that I really want you to catch. And what she and I just explained to you, 
uh, the struggle was created was creating it a deposit. Amen. The struggle, think not it strange, concerning the mm -hmm. fiery trials, which is tried you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Amen. That that season in our life was a uh, struggle. And although we didn't understand everything about it, mm -hmm. especially when she was lying there in the kitchen, mm -hmm. bleeding from her brain, mm -hmm. that struggle was creating a deposit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And um, like I said, I, I just give God the glory every time I think about it. I just, you know, I just say, Lord, thank you, deposit, yes. thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, one, one, one of the strong foundations of a relationship is trust. Mm -hmm. It should Amen. be, it should be, Amen, it God. should be the foundation. And one of the because one of the one of the most important roles that you're gonna play in play in your role of marriage is a trusted a trusted partner. Mm -hmm. And vows impose, and what those vows do, those vows impose a binding trust Imagine that you'll be there for each other through all sorts of situations. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, it all boils down to trust. Can I trust you with my truth? Mm -hmm. Can I trust you with my life? Mm -hmm. You know, will, will you broadcast it? Will you use it against mm -hmm. me? So trust before love. <laughs> trust <laughs> before love. Because what's going to happen. Yes. Yes. The, you know, and the, 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 reason why we say, that, the reason why we say trust before love is because once that trust is gained, the results in a relationship, the, re the results are going to lead to love. Mm -hmm. Um, the response to trust will always be love. Mm -hmm. Trust is going to activate it and activate that love. And what that love is going to do, that love is going to bear all things. It, and, and that through that love is going to activate that spirit of the vows. And once you learn to trust, love, and appreciate one another, there is no good thing either of you will withhold from withhold from each other. As a matter of fact. It'll get it'll get into the room where you where you'll start spoiling whether you start spoiling that individual, and it'll be like you know what this is just like a forever a forever honeymoon. So that's why all we're saying is that faith and trust is the is the beginning place in our relationships. Trust before love, trust before love. Faith in that and in, in that when in that that issues in faith because faith says. God is already there. Where is God? He's already in our future. And you know what? Although we live in an untrusting society, don't get it twisted. Mm -hmm. God has some people down here that's living in integrity. Amen. Okay? And somewhere on your journey, especially, especially if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, God would allow you to run into this individual that you had assumed that was non-existent. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He'll so, do it. So trust. You know, trust when you um mm -hmm. build. You know, build that build that bond of trust. Thank you, Lord. We cannot emphasize Ephesians, the fifth chapter, and the first and second enough when it comes to relationships. Ephesians 5, 1 and 2 says, imitate God. In other words, mimic him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Therefore, in everything you do, because you are, you're his dear children. Amen. Live lives filled with love. Mm -hmm. God is love. Mm -hmm. Imitate. Mm -hmm. Following the example of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He loved us. Mm -hmm. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us. As a pleasing aroma to Ephesians 5, 1 and 2, cause us to be imitators of God. Mm -hmm. 
walking in love. This type of love means that we direct our goodwill towards the welfare and benefit of someone else. Amen. Love gives us the freedom to appreciate one another beyond the norm. Let me say that again. Love gives us the freedom. We can be free in Christ Jesus to appreciate one another beyond the norm. You're no longer part of that competition thing. You know, whereas you compete with a, a next person to see how down you are, how much you got. You know, you can love beyond the norm in God. There is no hidden agenda. That is love. That is how, that's how we imitate God. You know, one of the, the things that I love <laughs> about being saved, once you're serious about God, God is going to give you the freedom to be yourself. Because you know it's not about you. Because Jesus said, deny yourself. And when you get, when, 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 when those uh, principles register in your mind, your heart, and your spirit, God, he's going to give you the freedom to be the unique person that you, you had, he had always intended you to be. He knows when a person is wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up again. And once they come to that place, God is going to say, hey, look, I want you to shine. Be your unique self. And, and, and you know what? Um, when you was talking about the love, but like we said, even before you get to that love part, learn, you know, in choosing a companion, learn first to trust them as a friend. Amen. You Amen. know, learn to learn them, learn them to absolutely. learn to trust them as a friend. You're absolutely right. And just one more observation in Ephesians, uh, the fifth chapter. While in verse 23 says, we are the head of the wife. Verse 25 goes on to say, we are to love our wives as Christ loved the church. Amen. And in marriage, we got to let wisdom. And I want you to feel me on this here. In marriage, you can do what you choose. But I strongly advise you, in marriage, we got to let wisdom rule. We are to view the woman as a reflection of ourself. Amen. That's what your wife is. She's she now. She's an individual in and of herself, but she's in. She's connected. She's in the covenant, and in that covenant, to an extent. Being that God has made you the uh, head, you're going to have some influence over her. Mm -hmm. Okay? And in that influence, especially when trust and love is involved, she's going to be a reflection of yourself. And, and you know what? When you, were, when you were talking about that, when you were saying how, we're, um, how the man is the head, but the... Um, but the love your your wives is um, Christ love the church. I kind of think of it when you think about it. Um, if I want to give like a natural analogy, it's almost like um, when you have teens. You know, um, like when, when when I was part of a call center, we had we had teens. You had the person that was the lead, and they had teens. So even so, even when it comes to a marriage and the family, it's like okay, we're team Harris. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And wisdom is going to rule. Even though he's the head, he's gonna he's gonna let wisdom rule. We're all gonna we're all gonna we're all the way we do. We all come to the table. We give our we give our input because this is the thing. What it is about a, a, a team, even if even if it's just a husband and a wife, if he if he wins, I win. If he loses, I lose. So it's not about trying to make the other person. Look bad, you know what? Well, you know, well, I'm, well, 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 I'm the head, and that's just now, the, that's that co competition there. Yeah. Well, I'm the head, and that's just the way it's going to be. No, it's mm -hmm. just look at it. Look at it as a team. 
if, 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 like I said, if he loses, I lose. If he wins, I win. So that's when he was talking about, you know, the, the wisdom, when you were talking about wisdom rule, I kind of thought about um, from a, from a team, from a team perspective, yes, there is a head, you know, there's a, there's a team leader over that team, but that team leader is functioning, should be functioning for the benefit of the team as a whole. So that man as head, he should be functioning in the spirit of the covenant to make sure that that marriage is successful is is, is successful as a whole. And I, I really believe if men and men, women that are uh, involved in the institution of marriage take heed, mm -hmm. some of this information that we're sharing with them, mm -hmm. there will be less separations and divorce. Amen. You know, it's as as she just so well put it. You know, it's it's all about you know. It's us. A it's winner. Mm -hmm. You, you want to be. You want to be. Be on that winning team. Mm -hmm. and and it's it, about it matters, us. It yeah. matters not. It matters not who get the credit. Mm -hmm. You know, just as long as hey, that unit is going forward, winning. She is now. She she's the bone of my bone, mm -hmm. and the flesh of my flesh. Mm -hmm. You know. I'm not just uh, supposed to look at her as as somebody outside of me. You know, she's a part of my heart, my spirit. Mm -hmm. Remember, I was talking about soul tie earlier. Wait, that, that's a soul tie here. Okay, there is no one else close than your wife. There's no one closer. And to allow her, it's very important to allow her to have a voice in the marriage. And that doesn't take away anything from you being the head. Amen. Amen. As a matter of fact, it shows wisdom in him being able to recognize all the gifting that contribute to the success of the relationship. Mm -hmm. if, my, if my wife <laughs> Is is uh she has a gift thing uh in an area that I don't I would be foolish to say no I'm I'm gonna do that anyhow mm -hmm. <laughs> and here you know she has the expertise as well as the experience mm -hmm. to get the job done mm -hmm. when I'm gonna uh, when I see that I'm gonna pull back and say baby go ahead and shine do your thing mm -hmm. yeah because mm -hmm. remember if if, I, if if he lose I lose um if if he wins I win so mm -hmm. that's Mm -hmm. A marriage in Christ is very untraditional and opens countless, opens countless of scripture to be built on. See, that's 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 the beauty about a Christian uh, marriage. You, you have the word of God that you can go to Amen. and sit down and say, OK, baby, uh, we, you, we we got a little differences. Let's go in the huddle and see what the word of God says. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How can two walk together unless they agree? And when and when and when he was when he was saying that that he that's kind of like a lead into uh, a scripture that we wanted to leave with you mm -hmm. leave with you on tonight, mm -hmm. and that's Psalms twenty seven and four. And it says, "One thing have I desired of the Lord, you, that Jesus. will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord yes. all the yes. days of my life, mm -hmm. to behold the beauty yes. of the Lord." and to inquire yes. in his temple. Yes. And so I thought that that would be fitting since we're talking about faith and trust right here. I want, I just want to connect. It's a connection to all the days of my life to the phrase until death do us part. Mm -hmm. So David is saying all the days of my life and part of those vows in essence are saying to death do us part. You know what? When I was when I was thinking about um, when it says to death do us part, even even when it comes to civil, when it comes to to, to the civil proceedings and understanding of that, have you noticed? And I was thinking, have you noticed that you don't have to go and renew your your wedding license every so many years? You have to renew your license for your you have to renew your driver's license. You got to renew your license plate. If you got pets, you got to renew 
the license for them. You know what I took away from that? Because in that silver union, even the person that's putting you together, even when you send that marriage certificate down to the courthouse after you get married, they're looking at it as a perpetual agreement. Mm -hmm. So they don't say, okay, y'all, you know, you got married in 2020, you need to come back in five years and renew your marriage license again to see if you still want to keep it going. So do you, so do you see, so you see, even, even they look at it. See if you, do that, do that, see if you want to keep it going. See if you want to keep it going. So it's like, okay, you come and renew your driver's license. See if you want to keep driving, you know, you need to renew that license for your pet to see if you still, you know, you know, want to legally own them. So it's like, okay. I say, hmm, but you never have to go back and renew your pet. You never have to go back and renew your marriage no. license because I think they're even, even without them saying it, they're kind of like without, you know, putting like the the um, the covenant spin on it to death do us part. They're kind of like indirectly saying you don't have to come back and renew it because this is a, until death do you part yeah. situation. So I, I kind of thought about that when um, I was reading the scripture. So. So with Dave, when David, in the in um the reason why I say there's connection, when David says all the days of my life, he is saying all the days of his life before his future even happened. Mm -hmm. In other words, what David is saying, he said, Lord, he said, I I'm not going to treat my relationship and my desire. He says one thing I have desire. He says I'm not going to treat, treat my desire for you like an on and off switch. Mm -hmm. He says, all the days of my life. And, and that's the same mindset we have to have when it comes to when we enter into the covenant of marriage. All the days of my life until death do us part. All the days of my life until death do us part. Because you know what? Life is going to happen. So but, but David was basically saying, God, it doesn't, I don't care what happens in my life. All the days of my life, I desire, I desire, I'm going to seek after you. All the days of my life, I'm, I'm going to dwell in your house. All the days of my life, I want to behold your beauty. All the days of my life, I want to inquire into your temple. So he was saying, all the days of my life is a form of surrender. God, whatever, whatever the future holds, all the days of my life. And that, and that not only, and like I say, and Pastor Roy, not only life is going to happen, but change is going to happen. I'm not the same person. He's not the same person um, that I met over 40, over 40 some years ago. Let me kind of jump in there. Yeah. And, and, and it's, you know, you have to keep evolving and renewing your relationship. With Amen. Amen. Okay? You can't just be stuck in one mode mm -hmm. and figure that that mode going to take you all the way to glory. Mm -hmm. No, no. <laughs> I'm here to tell you that, hey, uh, the, the different seasons come in your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and because those seasons come, don't mean things have to kind of fizzle out or dry up. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Amen. You know, there's always a degree of a fire that's yet in the tank that can keep that excitement that you, 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 you initially had with her. Amen. Now, now, it may not be as intense, but at the same time, it's there. Amen. Okay. Amen. And it's just a matter of you guys, you know, figuring out that, you know, uh, between one one another, you know, because as long as you got breath in your body, I mean, there can be some level of enjoyment when it comes to life. Amen. You know, when it comes to Carolyn and I, although we love, you know, we we love praying, we love reading the Word of God and sharing things of that nature, but Ecclesiastes goes on to say that there's a time for all things. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a time, you know, to laugh, it's a time to moan, you know, mm -hmm. it's a time to come together, it's a time, you know, hey, you know, we only get one shot at this thing called life. And it would be to our advantage to take, give it its best shot and think of things that can make our lives evolve and something of a quality nature amen and amen and like i said you know i'm not the same person mm -hmm. and he's not the same person you know 
that when we first met each other over 40 something years ago and everything in life is not always going to be good. Mm -hmm. But you know what, but, but praise God through all the, the changes and stuff that we went through, I praise God that I ended up with the new improved version. <laughs> <laughs> Me also, yeah, the new the improved. New yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she yet likes to travel. Oh, she yes. Likes, uh, we, we was just talking about a, a, a date night going to the uh, scene, what, Batman? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We, 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 we like going to movies also. Yes, yes. Besides yes. traveling. Yeah, I'm a, yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a movie buff. So, so, and you know, in the shuffle of life, we, you know, we can't, and the reason why I connected, um, that scripture in Psalms 27 and 4, the reason why I connected all the days of my life to until death do us part is because we shouldn't turn our, do our commitment like a turning off switch. You Amen. know, when times are Amen. good, Absolutely. when times are good, we good. Mm -hmm. But when, when things get rough, you know, I'm out. So, so that's the connection, our mm -hmm. relationship. So what's the connection we, we had said earlier about, it's always good to have, God in your life in a relationship because so because the relationship because your relationship with God is going to determine your relationship with one another. So David said all the days of my life that's vertical. It's like it's like the cross, you know, the sign of a cross. David said all the days of my life that's vertical. To death do us part. That's horizontal. Mm -hmm. So it's like a sign of a cross. So my relationship with God vertical. My relationship with you is horizontal. So that so that's what David what David says. You know what? All the days of my life, but if you purpose in your heart to just follow these principles, you'll be able to tell that spouse, you know what? I don't care what comes, you know, hell or hot water. Like Pastor Rue was saying early, sometimes things like everything's going to hell in a handbasket. Mm -hmm. He said, mm -hmm. I don't, it doesn't matter if our money is funny. It doesn't matter if that person is sick. You know what? Till death do us part. You know what? It kind of reminds me of uh, my pastor's wife when we initially got married in 1981. Uh, prior to us tying the knot, uh, she she took uh, Carolyn and I to the side. And she said this, and I'll always remember this. She said, Roy, I don't care if you have the only thing you have is some pinto beans and hot dogs. Just as long as you love one another. Amen. Amen. And I was like, wow, this is somebody very important to me that's <clears throat> speaking words in my spirit. And my, my conviction prior to about marriage, uh, my conviction about marriage prior to getting uh, married was, hey, if I ever get married, I just want to get married one time. Hallelujah. And for, for, for my pastor wife to come and give me that additional perspective, mm -hmm. I was like, okay. You know, that just added fuel to my fire. Going back to something that I initially said, if you are serious about marriage, mm -hmm. that in and of itself is a conviction. Mm -hmm. And if you ride that conviction during the duration of your marriage, mm -hmm. through the good, the bad, and the ugly, mm -hmm. I guarantee you what you're going to basically do, you're going to win that spouse over because she or he is going to see how serious you are about the institution. Amen. So here's our recap for tonight. We just we just give God the glory for everyone that, that chimed in. Um, so our recap, we're talking about vows on tonight. Vows are an important part of the covenant. Vows, what do vows do? Vows remind us of why we why we are with someone. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's mm -hmm. like like Pastor Roy Absolutely. said, like Pastor Roy has said, vows are like our GPS. That's mm -hmm. our GPS guide mm -hmm. on, you know. Which yes. direction we should go, how we should act. Mm -hmm. The next takeaway for our glory notes on tonight are trust before love. Mm -hmm. Trust that per All trust right. that, trust that person a, a, right. as a friend, and when you trust them automatically, mm -hmm. that love is that love is going to follow. Amen. 
The yeah. next take the lap the next takeaway is um our relationship. Your relationship with God is gonna determine your relationship with that with that person. Yes. Psalms 27 yes. and 4, yes. all the days of my life. Mm -hmm. Traditional vows till death do us part. And when and when and when it comes and when it comes to the vows as far as marriage is concerned. Don't don't be afraid if don't be afraid to remind your spouse if you're if you're going through something that's you know what? Do you hear what I hear? Now I heard I now I heard <laughs> is sickness and health better or worse, rich or poor. Do you hear what I hear? We love you with the love of the Lord. We appreciate you. What we're gonna do, um, we, what we're gonna do for the next couple of weeks, we're we're gonna we'll be talking about relationships because relationships um relationships in the body of Christ are so very very important you know unity togetherness you know peace that is so very important so we just appreciate we yes, just we, we just appreciate you for chiming in on tonight we're going to just pray our prayer for leave for leave hallelujah our father in the name of Jesus we just thank you for your mercy thank you for your grace god lord i pray in the name of Jesus this insight, God, this presentation that we have just shared with this audience, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, especially in their spirit and heart, God, let it germinate, Father God. Let a deposit, Father God, happen uh, within them uh, regarding the content of this. And I pray in the name of Jesus for all those that are out there who are married or contemplating marriage, marriage God. God, allow this to be helpful to them, God. Allow this to be a part of their conviction as well as their ideology, oh God. I praise you right now for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for chiming in amen. on this evening. Hallelujah. We love you guys. And we pray that uh, God gives you the grace to be with us uh, at the same time in the same place on next week. We love you guys with the love of the Lord. Be blessed. Enjoy Jesus and enjoy your marriage. Thank you, Lord. Thank Hallelujah. You, Lord Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.